after we have successfully created our model, let's take a look on different methods to analyze its performance. In this section, we'll only cover techniques that are used for models that deal with classification tasks. The most common way to quickly analyze the outcome of classification model is to use confusion metrics. In the field of machine learning, and especially the problem of statistical classification, a confusion matrix, also known as an error matrix, is a specific table layout that allows visualization of the performance of an algorithm. Each row of the matrix represents the instances in a predicted class, while each column represents the instances in an actual class. Or sometimes they are mixed up, so it's sometimes it's vice versa. The name stems from the fact that it makes it easy to see if the system is confusing two classes. Another common way to analyze the quality of classification is to evaluate model accuracy. Accuracy of the model is the number of correct predictions from all the predictions made. And there is one more statistic called Kappa statistic. Statistic when is used when we have an balanced amount of observations in between classes. If we have two classes of unequal type, like healthy and sick person, and the effect of mistaken classification for these two classes is different, you might be also interested in analyzing the following statistics. Sensitivity and specificity are statistical measures of the performance of a binary classification test, also known in statistics as classification function. Sensitivity, and sometimes you can see that sensitivity is often called as a positive rate, a recall, or the probability of the occasion in some fields, uh, measures the proportion of actual positives that are correctly identified as such. For example, uh, the percentage of sick people who are correctly identified as sick people. Specificity, also called the true negative rate, measures the proportion of actual negatives that are correctly identified as such. For example, the percentage of healthy people that were correctly classified as healthy people. Precision, also called positive predictive value, is the fraction of relevant instances among the retrieved instances, while recall, and which is actually the same thing in sensitivity is the fraction of relevant instances that have been retrieved over the total amount of relevant instances. Now, precision tells you how many of the selected objects were correct. Recall tells you how many of the objects that should have been selected were actually selected. Another useful characteristic for our binary classifier is a receiver operating characteristic curve, or ROC curve which is a graphical plot that illustrates the diagnostic ability of a binary classifier system and its discrimination threshold is varied. The ROC curve is created by plotting the true positive rate, TPR, against the false positive rate, FPR, at various threshold settings. The figure on the slide shows you three classifiers of different quality. Now let's see how can we use these characteristics for evaluation of model performance in MATLAB. We can actually use the glm val um, command to uh, make uh, evaluations of um, output variable based on some logistic regression model that we specify with coefficient. Remember, we saved that we have our data sets and we have a model saved in a separate files, which is in fact just a set of our coefficients of our model. Let's now um, try to evaluate that and construct a confusion matrix so that we can see how many predictions were made correctly and how many of them were made wrong. Okay, see so that um, I used um, a confusion mat function to create a confusion matrix. You also see that I rounded um, the output of our glm vol function because glm vol is the meaning of the output is actually the probability. It's the times when we have a very uh, close to one probability, but not one. In this, 
why fit will have uh, this number really close to one or really close to zero but not equal. That's why I use the wrong function to actually get these results. So why fit is uh, the predictions made by our model and why TE, which is why test, this is the real labels of the classes. So um, based on this confusion matrix that we see here, we actually see that, well, at least uh, in our uh, first row, first column, these are um, that predictions that we made correctly, as well as these ones that we uh, thought that the class is zero and the class is zero. We s the real class is one and we predicted one, but we also have quite a huge amount of mistakes. Um, we'll be better off using some uh, visualization for uh, confusion matrix. Let's just use a heat map. It's very nice. It gives us uh, some view, so the more um, rows that were classified and um, got in one of these cells of this matrix, uh, the darker the color is, so we can see the relation. It still seems not that bad, assuming that we just tried the uh, function randomly, didn't compare to any algorithms, and actually didn't uh, make any feature selection, but still we have quite a lot of mistakes, so we definitely have to uh, now think how can we improve our algorithm. And um, also another very useful characteristic that we have seen in the lecture that was in the accuracy, let's calculate it now as well. Okay, we see that the accuracy is uh, about 84%, um, which is not that bad, assuming that we just only started, but there's still a lot of space of improvement. You can use the formulas uh, presented in this lecture slides to also calculate in the same way as we calculated the accuracy, um, other characteristics like specificity, sensitivity, and all. You can also try to analyze ROC curves to take on the thresholds. And you also have um, quite a large space for improvement here, which we'll cover in the next lesson.